Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to see the two major types of cooling systems that are currently being used in IC engines. Broadly speaking, they are air cooled and liquid cooled. Okay, now in air cooled method, heat is carried away by the air directly which is flowing over the cylinder head and around the cylinder walls this type of a cooling system is mainly used in the scooters motorcycles auto rickshaws mopeds etc in this case fins on the cylinder block tend to carry away the heat from the combustion chamber and the air which is flowing over these fins in turn it carries away the heat the main functions or the main factors on which the transfer of heat through these extended surfaces that we call as fins it depends upon the difference of temperature the transfer area for the heat to get transferred and the heat transfer coefficient okay now the fins that they are arranged in such a way that majorly they are at right angles to the cylinder axis and the cylinder and heat temperature in an air cooled engine is about twice that of a comparable water cooled engine in case of a oil cooled engine high viscosity oil is used just some additional points over here that heat transfer coefficient between metal to water is 100 times better than metal to air so in case of water cooled or oil cooled or liquid cooled engines the transfer of heat will be much 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 better than compared to the transfer of heat which will take place in a simple air cooled engine okay however there are certain advantages which are associated with the air cooled engine since no additional components are required does it, the design of the engine it becomes similar and since additional equipments are absent over here like the cooling pipes radiator cooling system is also a very very simple one and as no additional coolant is used there is no problem of leakage okay and also the engine is not subjected to freezing troubles that is if the coolant is not heat, if normal required heat is not generated then the engine will not tend to start because of the excessive cooling that is provided by this liquid cooled system and also because of all the additional components additional weight will be subjected on the engine however there are certain disadvantages also the cooling that is provided by an air cooled system is not uniform throughout also the movement is a bit noisy in such in such engines then the maintenance is also not easy and smaller compression ratio engines are to be used because if the compression ratio is high the pressure generated will be high and the heat associated with high pressure is also on the higher side so higher heat generation will require a more robust and more efficient cooling system okay now let us go on a bit further these are some examples of air cooled engine the first one on the left we can see that an inline four cylinder engine air cooled system is shown a circulation fan is used which will make the draught of air to pass over the combustion chamber thereby carrying away the heat and also a horizontally opposed four cylinder engine is shown in which the arrows they depict the flow of air over here two different types of fans are used one is the radial flow fan another one is the axial flow okay let us go on a bit further now again an example of a beetle engine a gasoline engine you can see that cooling air is drawn in through the bellows okay and it is made to be incident on a fan this fan it forces the air 
to flow over the combustion chamber walls over the fins thereby heating it and throwing it out and a simple air cooled gasoline motorcycle engine is shown in the figure over here okay now let us go on a bit further now now this is a liquid cooled system in this method of cooling the cylinder walls and heads are provided with cooling liquid jackets through which the coolant will flow it will carry away the heat from the combustion chamber walls thereby it will itself get heated and this heated coolant is again brought back to its normal operating temperatures by passing draught of air over it so the coolant will carry away the heat from the combustion chamber or the engine and in turn a draught of air will carry away the heat from this coolant here we can see different components the very first one is the coolant cooler right on the left behind the coolant cooler you have a water pump this water pump will pump the water and make it to pass around the combustion chamber walls then you have the radiator fan which will pull the air and make it to pass over the water then you have the thermostat the main function of the thermostat is to regulate the temperature at which the cooling system will operate if the engine running temperature is low and in that the water based cooling is applied then further drop in temperature of the engine will take place and thereby normal operation of the engine will be hampered so this thermostat it regulates the operation of the cooling system it will only operate the cooling system when the engine running temperatures are on the higher side then the next component is the heat exchanger this coolant when it will flow around the engine through the water jackets or the coolant jackets it will take away the heat this coolant needs to transfer away its heat and this will take place in the heat exchanger then another heat exchanger with a valve is used which might be optional 7 is the engine and 8 it shows the direction of the air flow this is the heat distribution on the left side we can see that the coolant oil it is at 70 degrees celsius somewhere around in the skirt of the piston it reaches a temperature of around 190 degrees celsius the piston ring it reaches a temperature of around 220 degrees celsius the coolant which is flowing around the combustion chamber walls in the jacket it will be at a temperature of 100 and above in the piston face or the piston top will be at temperature of 300 degrees celsius the passage of exhaust gas through which exhaust gases are flowing out it is at a temperature of 450 degrees celsius approximately also the exhaust valve is at a very very high temperature that is 650 the spark plug it reaches a temperature of 600 degrees celsius whereas the intake valve and the inlet manifold are at lower temperatures of 250 degrees celsius and 60 degrees respectively and also the cylinder wall is at 185 degrees celsius so we can see over here that the temperature ranges are very very high so all these engine components they need to be properly cooled in order to maintain their proper operation then a heat transfer comparison is shown in case of liquid cooled and air cooled engine temperature of the gas is shown as 1000 degrees celsius inside the combustion chamber the temperature of the combustion chamber wall is 190 degrees celsius whereas the ambient temperature of air is 25 degree celsius the coolant temperature is shown to be at 105 degree celsius okay let us go on a bit further now then different components in case of a water cooling system the radiator the radiator cooling fans pressure cap and reverse tank the water pump thermostat freeze plug and the heater core which we have already seen in the previous diagram this is just another way of representation of the cooling system what a radiator does a radiator exchanges the heat which is carried away by the coolant 
from the engine jacket to the air it works as a heat exchanger and also it is a coolant reservoir then you have the pressure cap and reserve tank it will help to hold the pressure in the cooling closed cooling system and also the relief pressure into the overflow chamber when high temperatures and pressures are encountered the radiator cooling fans will draw a draught of air over the radiator thereby allowing the coolant that is circulating in the radiator to give away its heat which it has carried away from the combustion chamber walls and water pump as the name itself indicates it will help to circulate the coolant throughout the cooling system then you have the thermostat it will maintain proper engine temperature when the engine is running at lower temperature it will not allow the cooling system to work because further cooling of the engine will render it useless it will not be able to operate as the temperature increases then this thermostat will help to circulate the coolant and thereby it will help to reduce the excessive amount of heat which is generated inside the combustion chamber then you have the freeze plugs when the coolant it will freeze pressure of water freezing and expanding will force the freeze out plugs to pop out as a result of this popping out of the freeze plugs pressure developed inside will be relieved and it will save the engine from cracking then you have the heater core it will provide heat to the interior of the vehicle when it is required in temperate conditions we generally use air conditioner in the engine in the vehicle sorry but where the temperatures are low in the atmosphere then the reverse is required that is heating is to be required inside the vehicle in this case heater core is to be used then you have anti freeze coolant it has got a very low freezing point and it is based off with water mixture of freezing point depressor for cold environments boiling point elevator for higher coolant temperature and additives is used in this case so normally here you will find that propylene glycol and ethylene based is used then if you have to maintain the cooling system a visual inspection initially will serve the purpose however the pressure cap in the radiator is to be checked if the recommended pressure levels are being maintained or not also the thermostat is to be regularly checked for it is opening at proper temperature or not then you have to have a pressure test to identify any leakages which are taking place including in the radiator the water pump the passage of coolant the radiator and heater hoses and the heater core also an internal leak test is to be conducted to check for the leakage of combustion gas into the cooling system the engine fan test for proper operation is also required if the fan is not working then draught of air will not be pulled over the cooling system and also system power flush and refill with manufacturer's recommended concentration of coolant is to be carried out time and again okay thank you very much